good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever time of day you've decided to watch these videos. Um, welcome back. Uh, apologies that these videos are coming out a little bit later um, than usual. Had some technical difficulties um, yesterday that were just not allowing me to get things done, so I apologize for that. Um, and uh, just some what's it called? Some announcements. So I will have your exams graded hopefully by uh, tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Um, and what I'll do is I'll open up um, your another opportunity for you to complete an exam analysis and reflection. Um, and that will be due on Sunday. Should be a relatively quick thing if you did it the first time. Um, just to give you some uh, potential five points extra credit towards your um, second exam. But I want to get the short answer questions graded for those first, but it's something you can kind of start to work on if you want. Um, another big thing is you do have another homework this week. So homework four, which covers chapter seven and chapters eight, uh, which we've already finished. That's um, the, the ocean circulation and um, waves. So that is also due on Sunday. That's on Connect. And then, of course, the usual um, little small homework you'll have for um, for this set of videos. Kind of a nice thing, um, even though these videos are coming out a little bit later, one day later than um, I normally like to have them out. Um, a lot of a lot of the next bit of material is just a whole lot of show and tell. So lots of pictures, lots of little explanations, because um, we're going to finally start talking about coastlines and things that um, that make coastlines what they are um, and why we see different um, geological processes at each coast. So just kind of the, the main um, main announcements out of the way. All right. So all that said, you know, we started talking about tides on Thursday um, when we were together and we know that tides are um, pulled mainly from the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun. Um, but there's, there's different kind of um, features that we can see with tides as well. So what we're looking at here is circulation around an amphidromic point. So an amphi, amphi means around, dromus means running. So it's a round or running point. And what's really fascinating is we can see that there's really no tidal ranges between these points. Um, which is kind of cool, I think. But the further away you are from these points, the higher the tide can be, which is really quite fascinating. And what also kind of helps drive um, tides is things that we've already talked about, like the salinity of water, the density of water, the temperature of water, um, the the geography underneath the water. So are there are there mountains or ge yeah, geology, geography, but like are there mountains? Are there valleys? Are there rift valleys? You know, so all of these things combined can help uh, give us this tide variation that we see around the world. And that's what I like this image because it kind of nicely shows sort of like this circulation in a sense in a in a daily movement, which I think is is kind of neat. So this here, this map here is looking at the tide range um, and how it increases with the distance away from the amphidromic point. So with the warmer colors here indicating a higher tide range and the cooler colors here indicating a lower tide range. So where you can see where there's these nodes, right, where there's these little kind of parts where these white lines come together, there's a the cooler colors. So there's not a whole lot of tide range there. Maybe if you've been to Hawaii and you've been on beaches there, you've noticed that, yeah, there is a tide difference, but there's not a massive difference between high and low tide because it's relatively close to to the tide, uh, to the uh, node point here. Uh, we already talked about the Bay of Fundy, which is right up here in uh, North America, but I do just want to uh, point out another region here in Central America, and I want you to think real quick about <clears throat> what... Uh, happens in Central America um, and it and has to do with transportation and what exists here. So pause, think about it for a second. The Panama Canal, right? So the Panama Canal exists um, in between Central and uh, South America and we use we use the, the energy of the tides to help um, move these ships through that location, which I think is really quite fascinating. 
Um, and man, when they when they discovered that, how nice was that? So that they can use that space um, to have ship transport as opposed to having to do all the way around South America. Um, if I was in a ship, I would uh, not want to have to go all the way around South America <laughs> and go through the Southern Ocean, which is really treacherous, right? So really knocking off a couple months of time there um, in that in that space. Um, all right, so a very similar uh, map, but this is showing the the time that the time differences between um, or like how long a tide would would need to to travel from one location to another, um, or not the tide, but like the 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 timing in a sense, the the hours away. And we also know that tides are shallow water waves, so they're going to travel faster in these deeper waters. So that kind of that also has another impact in terms of timing. Uh, when tides are high, when tides are low, uh, et cetera. So to kind of drive home this idea, I have a tide table that compares um, La Jolla, California on the left and Oakland, California on the right. Um, and we can see a couple of differences here. So I'll just move my, my face down here. Um, we can see that the tide range is different. So the max tidal range in La Jolla is only about two and a half meters, which is roughly six and a half feet or so. Um, whereas in Oakland, the tidal range is or 8.2 feet, derp, uh, whereas the, the tide range in Oakland is 2.65 uh, meters, which is roughly 8.7 feet. So we have a larger tide range here. We're further away from that amphidromic point. That's difference number one. Difference number two, if you're to try to focus your eyes on one particular day, like say, for example, uh, Tuesday, April 14th, um, for which each one you can see, I know it might be a little bit small on your page, but just showing the timing differences between the lows and high tides. So if we look at our lowest of low tide happens at 1036 a.m. for La Jolla, on that same day, the lowest of the low tide occurs at 1225 p.m. in Oakland. So there's just a timing difference between Southern California, and by the way, La Jolla is like uh, San Diego, um, versus Oakland, California, which is obviously up here in Oakland. Um, we can also see like the the height of each one. It's also, I think, kind of interesting, like the difference between the low tides, um, like the, or and the, or sorry, the, the least high of the high tide is at about three feet, whereas the least high um, for our tide here is at about 4.8 feet. So again, just kind of showing that the range of tide differences here in Oakland is much greater than that in La Jolla down in SoCal. So just to summarize um, the chapters that we have covered uh, most recently, be chapters eight. So we talked about waves, so the different types of waves, right? We have the capillary waves, storm waves, tsunami waves, tide waves, and we talked about the anatomy, the crest, trough, wave length, wave height, um, steepness and the breaking of the waves, those different types of waves, right? And deep versus intermediate versus shallow waves, so kind of the combination thereof. Um, in this class, we won't be doing any of the, the math for it, but if you're in, in, your, if you're in my lab, you will. Um, and what happens to the waves as they approach the coast and interact with the coast, we talked about this. We'll talk a little bit further in um, talking about coastlines here in just a few. And then, of course, tsunamis. And then we finished up um, talking about tides. So what causes them? Of course, the moon and the sun, gravitational pull terminology for different uh, tides and the types of daily patterns. So the diurnal, mixed semi-diurnal, and semi-diurnal, right? So just these these different types here. Um, and with that, we'll, that will finish up um, video number one. So there we go. All right. Thanks so much for watching.